Hi there. Now for the first part here, we've got to sketch the graph of y equals 7 to the power x, for x being any real number. Showing the coordinates of any points at which the graph crosses the axis for two marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done it already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, to be able to sketch the graph of y equals 7 to the power x, then we should be familiar really with what the graph of anything to the power x, a to the power x, where a is a positive number, is going to look like. And it's going to be a curve something like this. It never touches the x-axis, but it gets closer and closer to it and then gradually rises like this until it goes way up like that. This will be the graph of y then equals 7 to the power x. y equals 3 to the power x will be a similar graph going through the same point here but slightly shallower here. y equals 8 to the power x will be a graph looking like this going through the same point here but then going very steep and so on. Okay, You can see tutorials on this on my website if you're unsure. Just look under graphing exponential functions. OK, we're asked to find out where it crosses the axis. Well, it doesn't cross the x-axis. The x-axis is often referred to as an asymptote. But for the y-axis, this will be where x equals 0. And so you'd have y equals 7 to the power 0, which is 1. All right. So that's essentially our graph. Now, in part b, we're asked to solve the equation 7 to the power 2x minus 4 times 7 to the power x plus 3 equals 0. Giving you answers to two decimal places where appropriate for 6 marks. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a few moments to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So, first of all then, I'll just copy out the question. That is 7 to the power 2x minus 4 multiplied by 7 to the power x plus the 3 equals 0. And what I would want to do is change this, 7 to the power 2x. See this as 7 to the power x all squared. We generally do this in these types of questions. And here we've got 4 times 7 to the power x. Just leave that as it is. And then plus 3 equals 0. And what we've got here is a quadratic equation in 7 to the power x. Now sometimes you'll find that people like to say let u or some other letter equal, in this case, 7 to the power x and write it as u squared minus 4u plus 3 equals 0, and then go on to factorise it from there on. You should be able to do it straight off though, I feel, so I'm going to do it straight off. A couple of brackets like this, OK, equals 0, and we're going to have 7 to the power x here and 7 to the power x here. So you've got 7 to the power x all squared, giving us that first term. And then we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us plus 3. And that would be, in this example, minus 3 and minus 1. Because if you put minus 3 and minus 1 in here, you need to check out that it gives us minus 4 times 7 to the power x. And indeed it does. You've got 7 to the power x times minus 1 is minus 7 to the power x. And here you've got minus 3 times 7 to the power x. Add those two together, you've got a total of minus 4 multiplied by 7 to the power x. Now that means that each of these factors could equal 0. So that means that therefore 7 to the power x must equal 3. Or if this was to equal 0, 7 to the power x would equal 1. And so if we just work out each of these equations separately, we'll start with when 7 to the power x equals 3. Now when you've got something like this, there's several ways you can do it. We've got to take logs to both sides and because we've got the unknown being a power here and it's not an obvious answer. So 
What I'm going to do is show you both methods and that is I'm going to take logs to base 10 first of all. So if I log both sides that would be log to base 10 of 7 to the power x equals the log in base 10 of 3. You don't have to write the base as 10, it's understood to be base 10 when you just write log. Then we use the power rule for logs. I'm assuming you're familiar with all the log rules. Again, if not, you can always check them out on my website. So we bring the x to the front. Okay, so we end up with x log of 7 in base 10 equals the log in base 10 of 3. And then we just divide both sides by the log of 7 to get x. So x would equal the log of 3 divided by the log of 7. And if you work this out on your calculator, you should find you end up with 0.564 and so on. Which when rounded to two decimal places is equal to 0.56 to 2dp. Now, as I say, you don't have to do it that way. What you could do is do it by taking, for instance, logs to base 7 on both sides. So if I just wrote that out again as 7 to the power x equals 3, if you took logs to base 7 to both sides, the left hand side becomes instantly x. x equals and then would have the log in base 7 of 3. How did I get this result? Well, what we do is we take logs to base 7 of both sides. So it's log in base 7 of 7 to the power x equals the log in base 7 of 3. And then we bring the, uh, the x, the power, to the front. So we therefore have x log in base 7 of 7 equals the log in base 7 of 3. Now the log of any number in its own base is always 1. And that leads on to just simply x times 1, which is clearly x, equals the log of 3 in base 7. And if you work this out on your calculator, again, you should find you get 0.564 and so on, which obviously is 0.56 to two decimal places. So that's another way of doing it. Now the other one, that is when 7 to the power x equals 1, there's no need to really use logs because the answer is obvious. 7 to the power 0, anything to the power 0 always returns 1. So it follows from here that therefore x equals 0. So we've got our two answers then, x equals 0 or x equals 0.56 to two decimal places.